What about Lindley's man? There was a thing called Jets. Um, I've got a feature. Oh, it's a Berlin Film Festival. Ah, it was, ah, yeah. it was part of Berlin Alley, man. So I had a feature film that I've written, and there's this thing called Jets. It's junior entertainment talent, something they're called. And um, you essentially pitch your film to this fucking massive conference room full of people. Right. So it's me, Dave Gillies, who put this boys night, and Dave Brown, who put this spiral, and I'm in the middle. And for some reason, I decided to dress like fucking Huggy Bear, face dust, and actually wearing this big giant fur coat. <laughs> But it made me stand out. It may have helped, I don't know. But uh, so we're pitching. Becky gangster. Oh, it was exactly. It was. It was hundred percent Nicky Barnes. It was Nicky Barnes all over. You need man. to spot it these no, days. No, definitely, you definitely. Mean? But uh, so we pitched the film, and uh, I had my like my wee jokes lined up, and I was like, "This is gonna be great." And I was like, uh, "My first one was like, oh, sorry, my translator didn't make it. Uh, just imagining you're looking at a very less attractive James McAvoy, and we'll be okay." Got an amazing laugh. Everybody right. laughs. And five jokes after that, man, I was like, silence, 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 oh, silence. And I just went, this is Dave. And I was sad in the mic, oh, man. And no joke, after that, I was like, um... so then you had to go back the next day, everybody go back the next day to find out who won it. Right. Which I thought was insane. They get you all back together to find aye, out aye, who wins and loses. Which is like... So I, was, I wasn't even going to go. I was like, I, I fucked up, man. Like, I completely aye. destroyed that. Like, there's yeah. no chance we're winning it. Aye. And fucking we won it, man. We came first place. And essentially what they do is they help you find... Uh, Kind of like mentors and co-production partners to help get the film made, right. which is it's pretty great. Like it, it's still no, um, yeah. it's still early days, like aye, whether aye. anything will come to fruition. But it, like the main thing it taught me, which mm. I thought was like, which I really needed, is a confidence boost. Was the same as what Spiral playing Rotterdam did. Is uh, is that my stuff plays outside Glasgow? Aye. You know what I mean? And I needed yeah. that. I needed that boost because I. You kind of feel like you're playing to a very small audience. Sometimes you feel like nobody else is getting it, especially because like when like Boys Night Man didn't do very well. Uh, we didn't have much money to submit it to festivals, but the festivals we did submit it got rejected to a lot down England, man. Like a lot of places didn't were not interested right. in it, and uh, played everywhere in Scotland. So there's always that fear that oh my, I'm just the Scottish guy. Aye, aye. But Berlin and Rotterdam, that made me feel aye, like European have got much more. You know, that's what the way I see. You know, um, European cinema is up much more. And subtitles are open to subtitles. Yeah. Well, Americans are not listening to subtitles at all. No, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. different. Europe is fucking huge. No, you know it's mean? true. So I know, definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like I would rather fucking people have make films and people see them in Europe, and if they don't see them elsewhere, that's fine. Nah, hundred percent. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But exactly. you need it. You probably need it bigger outside Scotland. Yeah, you just. It's you know, just, just, just good to know. Because you're not going to get everybody in Scotland. So no, that's. So, you know what I mean? Uh, just, uh, more than anything, it was just a good confidence boost. But, uh, but it was just crazy being over there, man. Like, um, just I've never been abroad, and then you're in this city with the buildings bigger than you've ever seen. Like, everybody says it's good. It was amazing. It's I loved it, man. Like, I'm a smoker, and you can smoke everywhere. Like, right. it's, apparently, it's the only city in Germany where you can just like, smoke everywhere, like indoors, every single place, really. And uh, but that blew my mind. I thought that was really cool. Uh, but it was, it was great, man. It was great. Pretty strange, man. I just got some strange parts there, but it was pretty cool. Like, uh, <laughs> I was trying to go to the toilet in this um, in this pub we were in, and it was like uh, just all these middle doors, and there was a queue each door. Right. So I get in one of the queues, and I'm just waiting. And this German guy comes like, "Hey, man, I don't think you want to go in there." And it's like that's it. It was like apparently that was like a drug room. Like, all oh, right. It was like, yeah, so there must have been a week. I was like, I don't, I'm not Berlin. I'm sure it's a pretty nice place, but like, a, I had a kind of like a. <laughs> A lot of freedom in Berlin from what aye, I, I could aye. see, yeah. I get what you're yeah. But it was, uh, that was, it was insane, man. It was very cool, very cool. Uh, and people were just really like lovely over there, man. It was really... Uh, I was just that confidence boost of knowing that your stuff... No, it is a much bigger good crowd. No, definitely, you know, yeah. Rotterdam was the same, though, man. Seen Spiral play with like a worldwide audience, and then <laughs> we arrived quite late to the festival, right. and uh, they had it set up so people could watch like, the films on these little screens, and there was already a little bit of buzz about Spiral. People really loved it, like right. all these, like, uh, a lot of Dutch people in it. So yeah. it was really, it was really a good... A good it's good it to see that in something that made so fast as well. Oh, 100%, so, definitely, so yeah. Yeah, so the, oh, the, definitely, the anything, start, yeah, yeah, so definitely. I mean, so oh, God, no, we must have broke a lot of laws on Spiral, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah no, definitely. But it was fun. It was oh, it was so much fun, man, no, definitely, fun, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. But uh, the, the films that won at the 40 hour thing too, man, the, the strange thing was just being in, com in the company with some of those films, like some of the 40 hour films were amazing, like the ones from France and uh, the one from Edinburgh, like they were just really, like, really, really amazing. It was just amazing that they did it in two days. It was just really, really, aye, really, aye. really strong company. So it was just amazing to screen alongside them as well. If you don't mind me asking, what's your plans next for stuff? The, the, the dream is to get a <sighs> to get a feature off the ground. There's, like, there's talk around the uh, drop off Michael being developed into a feature. Right. 
Um, I'd probably only be a co-writer on it, but it'd still be a, a step up for me. And um, I've got another feature that I'd love to do, which would be me be writing director, which is what's well, what that's what we pitched on Berlin. But it's still, it's just such a. It just feels like such a long road, and then nothing right. feels like it's going to come. It's weird. Yeah. I think my, I'll probably, I think best case scenario will probably be writing for TV in some form or another, and hopefully right. getting something going that way. Like that's what I never asked you with BBC. What was the BBC Writers Group? You were part of that, weren't you? I was. Like, so I went to the Drama Room in 2018, which is a quite a big thing in London, man. It was quite. It was a good buzz getting on that because uh, once again, that was another kind of because the script that I got me. It was about two hash dealers. It couldn't have been more Glaswegian. Like right. I didn't write like if, I, I would expect an English person just to read it. Like, what the fuck is this? And throw yeah. away. It was written very Glaswegian dialect, but uh, they said they saw like an authentic kind of localized voice in it that you liked. And uh, so going to the drama in 2018, then 2019 I got into the TV drama writers program, which is just finishing up, and that's what got me my first big kind of commission as a right. writer. And. Uh, Aye, but that was a big step up, man. That definitely felt like that kind of solidified me as a as a writer. I got got an agent. Kind right, of, like, right. I mean, it, it definitely it helped a lot, man. It did, did give me a good boost. Like uh, you got, would you get actors to read your script is it there as well? Yeah. Aye, so you were there the other day, weren't you? I was you? there the other day, so they did. They did. It's kind of set, essentially it's like hypothetical. So there was about nine of us on this scheme uh, from all over the UK, and uh, they brought in a bunch of great actors to 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 read the script man. Like there was actually there was a really fantastic actor from Steps, a girl called uh, I'm gonna mess her name up, I think I'm pretty sure it's Lewis Chimimba. She was absolutely amazing man, just very like I could imagine myself writing for a voice to release it. And there was also Don Gillet there who was uh is it Lucas Johnson in East Enders? He was a guy that killed somebody with a shovel. Right. Is that the, did he have a Newcastle series years ago or something? He may have but he, I, I think I know what you mean. Honor, but he, he, right. man, he was just so sound and uh when I walked into the room, he was practicing a Glasgow accent, and I think and when I walked in, he thought, fuck this, I'm doing, I'm doing this. <laughs> aye, do, don't do, 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 do. But yeah, man, it was, it was just such a buzz to see, like, me. <laughs> and then the great thing about it was, um, so the, what I didn't realise is, so I missed the first day of reading, so it was four readings one day, then there was five the next, and uh, the, the actors and people in the room were being quite savage with the scripts, like, giving notes. Right. And people were getting torn apart, and right. I was just sitting there like, oh my god, I've written this thing essentially about a drug dealing granny in Glasgow, so they're going to hate this. And, uh, they were so complimented, they were so lovely, they were like, this is a world we've not seen before. And uh, even that was like, just, I've had a bunch of boosts recently that made me feel like, start with Spider, like, like, like Glasgow can play outside Glasgow. Absolutely. And that's you know, the, yeah, I, but that's the thing it. is, look, we're on a global stage now, right? Definitely, yeah. So, it's not years ago where it was, you could only get television, whatever. We're on a global platform, so actually people in fucking Mexico watching subtitles could identify with stuff. Definitely, yeah. You know, there's bands yeah, yeah. that are huge in, in this country, but they're huge in, uh, you know, are we doing in fucking Cuba and whatever, and you wouldn't yeah, imagine. Yeah. We've got a global platform, as long as we're all right with subtitles, I think. No, 100%. But there's a true. lot of people that are totally fine watching subtitles. Yeah, definitely. I'm, like, I mean? I'm fine watching subtitles, you know, my love. Um, the subtitles. only thing is, no, so, there's no fucking subtitles going on this, because no, it'll take maybe 10 years to do it. So Far too long, this is probably for the Scottish fucking no, mob, definitely, definitely. and for, the, for the, the few fans that I've got for America that actually understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah no, definitely, so, definitely. But no, I, you know, one of the things actually that I think is a positive thing for us, man, is a uh, parasite one in best yeah, picture. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. completely I know, Korean, completely subtitled. Like, uh, and that's the thing. I think we do have to, even in England, man. I think we do have to treat our stuff like a foreign language film. I think it's unavoidable. I think that's the, it? but uh, but uh, and it's the thing today as well. You can still get your your films on global platforms like Amazon. Definitely, yeah, I mean, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's it. You know yeah, the thing yeah. that the thing that's exciting me is that when people come back to me at night time in my wee series, and they've watched something, which is the way I like them discovering it. I don't like them discovering it on Amazon because then it's compared to it as if oh, this is a no budget Breaking Bad or whatever. Yeah, which yeah. fucking no. Yeah. When somebody discovers it on Instagram. Yeah, and they're watching yeah. a, a, an episode there or a clip there yeah. and they go, they're go, they caught up in it and then they go, I went, I, I stuck it in Amazon my television, I watched the whole series on my television. Well, definitely, but it's reversed yeah. that way because there's no expectations that it's anything else. Yeah, it's like yeah. a free YouTube video. Yeah, it's what it is, so it is what it is and then they watch yeah. it. To me, that's fucking exciting. 100% definitely. Like, I've, got, I've got a project I really want to do. Um, hmm. I wrote it in a way I thought this won't cost any money, I just need people that are up for it. I need like four people who are game for this. We won't need any money, but then I sent it to a couple of producers like, now you need like five grand for this. But right. essentially it's all portrait mode, it's all for Instagram, it's essentially made for like the, yeah. the handheld view. Yeah. 
And I think that is the way it's going, man. I think, and I think that there's a way to do that and still keep like your artistic integrity. But this is what we just talked about uh, off camera there, yeah. uh, Quibby. We oh, 100%, Katzenberg. definitely, yeah. Everybody's man. laughing at that. I saw it a year and a half ago. I saw Katzenberg talking about it. Jeffrey yeah. Katzenberg, who ran DreamWorks with Spielberg, yep. talking about Quibby. And they're saying, oh, who's going to watch this stuff? Well, everybody's watching stuff on their phones. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we've got Netflix and we've got Amazon. No, that's for when you watch a Saturday night movie or a series. Yeah, and been, definitely. That's still, that's still gone anywhere. No. But people are still watching stuff on the train. And, so, and I'm watching Netflix on my phone. You know, I watched Uncut Gems on my phone. And I'll be honest, man, like I, I was still completely invested. Like it didn't. Yeah. I've watched it on my TV since, but I was still completely invested. It didn't, it didn't dull it for me. Like. Well, this is the thing, right? I remember putting a video, uh, a vlog out a couple of years ago, right? And it was talking about where uh, Spielberg, in fact, ironically, Spielberg is made for Quibi. He's just yeah, made something for Quibi yeah, and he's yeah. bitching about streaming, yes, right? No being yeah. a real movie. When yeah. I was, a, that's what I was talking about. When I was a kid, I used to go and watch movies in the Odeon in Glasgow and I'd watch all these movies, Star Wars had just came in, but I'd watch all these Sinbad movies, Sinbad, the, the Eye of the Tiger, yeah. and all the, the di- disaster movies, Airport 1978, yeah, yeah, yeah. and fucking Tower Inferno. I thought the world was coming to fucking end. <laughs> you know, so I watched all these movies as a kid, yeah. and a lot of shitty movies, right? But then when the VHS came in, I'm watching The Deer Hunter. There's no widescreen, it's the fucking box oh, with yeah, the telly. I'm yeah. watching all these Cuckoo's Nest and Deer Hunter yeah. and all these movies on VHS, right? Yep. That's where I discovered them when I went to London. Then I got the cinnamon sea taxi driver. Yeah, the point true. I'm trying to make is when people say that you shouldn't watch things on this or you shouldn't watch streaming like Tarantino, I don't like streaming, or you shouldn't watch on your phone. But that's the way I fucking consume yeah, really stuff. Yeah, Even until I was 14, we never... You know. Big tellies weren't their thing. Yeah. I mean, at all. I mean, it's like a... So are the classics. I 100%, saw them. Yeah. This. And then fucking sometimes the video would, was chewed. But yeah, it, yeah. Didn't, I mean, yeah. It, did not, it did not impact the enjoyment know, of the film at all. It's interesting. Like a, So we, we, we actually didn't even watch... We, we, I discovered movies. I had Raging Bull on VHS. Yeah, I watched I the fucking... Like Scarface. Out. There's people at you know. Scarface I never saw getting shot. I know. Because <laughs> 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 but this is the it, thing. I saw Taxi Drive. Uh, Deer Hunter, I went to see it multiple yeah. times, and when I went to London, the, 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 doing it at the embankment, I saw it on the big screen, Amazing. and I saw fucking things that I'd never seen. Oh, they're drinking yeah. Rolling Rock, I never really noticed that, that before. Uh, I definitely, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't have went to the cinema if it hadn't been for VHS. That's so to me, today, yeah. streaming. Phones is the new that's sort a new VHS, that's a really interesting way to put it. That's you know a I mean? real interesting way because to put it. Because to me, it's fucking stories. So when Spielberg says that it's not a proper movie, it can't get up for the Oscars unless it's in the cinema or whatever, I went, you corporate bastard. Yeah. Let's just try to protect the cinemas. Yeah, try, yeah, but now, yeah. uh, he's coming, he's on Quibi. Yeah, 100%. I know he's going to Sam Raimi's on it. It's like everybody's so, going to be on it there, definitely. At the end of the day, we all know we're viewing habits. People yeah. are watching things when they want to watch them, the way they want to watch yeah, them. Definitely. So for a filmmaker to say it's only for the big screen, uh, it's Scorsese said for the Irishman, he never made it for, he, he made it for um, you know, Netflix because he got the money there. I'm sure he would have wanted to make it for a fucking cinema and get Hollywood with yeah, the money. Definitely. Never, Hollywood never gave him the money. Yeah, so, definitely, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So that's the way I view it. One hundred percent. Another thing that Quibi's great for too, man, is like um, I, f- I think there's a real art. Like I've always said, not that I've, I've got fucking uh, realistic hopes to like that I'll make it this big fucking filmmaker, but I think there's such an art to short filmmaking and short form storytelling, and I think that's what's. But this is the perfect time. Now. Definitely, and I, and I, I think know. that like, I think there's going to be a lot of filmmakers getting celebrated now that should be. You know, like, there's, there's there's a lot of Scottish people that look really. Like Simone Smith, um, Brian Ferguson, like these are really interesting like filmmakers, man. Who like making stuff that that isn't like 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 I'd, I'd love to see what they do with a feature, but just the fact that what they're doing with short film, there should be an outlet for it. Like I mean, Aye, like, but Scotland tried with that thing and next big thing, like that is pretty great. But we need more. We need we need to get more eyes on everything. All the stuff that's coming out. Here. I think uh, people need to embrace more. I think people need to realise how much control that they've actually got. As well, yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Still, yeah. no wait for the permission, but no waiting for the permission means that you've got to be entrepreneurial, more entrepreneurial. Yeah. You've got to find money, which is fucking hard, and I know it. Yeah. But that's the reality. That will show how much you really care about what you want to do. Well, definitely, definitely. That you've yeah. got to go out there and fucking get the money. Yeah, hustle, some way. Right, definitely. Um, but in definitely. terms of short, and I don't think that you know we were brought up with features, but the world has changed with the way yeah. we're consuming content. Not Despite definitely. what I'm saying about YouTubers. YouTubers make videos every other fucking day, okay, because it's in their room and it's camera reviews, whatever. They're churning out content every other day, so they build an audience, they build subscribers, sell t-shirts. Aye. Filmmakers make a film once in the blue moon, yep. and then they're not putting the content there because it's the same film, you can only promote that so much, so they're building that audience. So the YouTubers could sell fucking t-shirts, anything to no, anybody. Definitely, aye. We have to get that mindset, 
like as a, as a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk talks about we're a wee media business, yeah. we're brand yeah. and we're yeah. creative filmmaking. Um, and I think that's the only way to to do it really. You no, know. definitely, that's the problem too. And then that's what I mean for even just directing is like you make a short film. So I made uh, Concrete Flowers 2014. I didn't direct again until Chipped, which was like two years later. So it's like we need to be able to like churn out more content, get more stuff out there. Yeah, fucking def- factory. Hundred percent. That's the way it should be. Definitely. Yeah, because that is the only way we build. You definitely. Know. And that's like, why I'm trying to micro size things um, and failing and trying. You're, you're and failing. pretty great at that. All of you, there's all hey, like, hey, you've I'm, consistently got something going I've, on. I've no, hey, I'm not out there enough, and I'm, I know that. But I'm, I'm gearing up to that where I'm trying to micro size things so fucking much that I can that I can shoot and sound and be so right. Right, we can shoot. I can shoot fucking. 14 episodes within a certain, you know, right, it's, definitely. it's what you do with that. No, you definitely, know. definitely. And then, if you want to do a feature, if you've got an audience and you go, right, I want to do a feature, um, if you've got an audience, then they're going to watch the feature. I know, well. that's when I'm kind of, so basically, like, I am at that stage when I'm, like, there's a big part of me that's like, fuck it, no money, let's just get the people together, the dedicated people. Like, I'm sure Gavin, who shot Spiral, would break his back. I'm sure he would jump on board and shoot a feature because the thing is you yeah. still got you still get awareness in the, the industry that if you shot the feature film that you, you know you, you've still got an awareness to actually maybe get it out there Definitely. and get but platforms there's yeah. just such a fear around it it's just that idea that like um it's because shooting the films like it's not, it's not you lost you lost the fear doing spiral you yeah, know, you just fucking went done it. Done, done it, not definitely. If you had that definitely. same spirit with making the feature. 100%. It's just you know. the, 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 only, the only real difference is, with Spire, is like it's two days, you kind of need to be. I know that. But, know. Yeah, but at the same time, if you get those, it's a much, it's a lot bit more work, but it's a much bigger reward. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got this. But there's some people yeah. waiting to be involved with a feature for fucking years, that never happens. No, definitely, yeah, 100%. So you say if you commit 14 days of your life, life to something, yeah, shoot then, it, yeah. and you know, and, and if they look at the script and they go, it's a good script, it's a yeah, great filmmaker, yeah. it's a chance it goes out there, and you calculate it, you go, well, that's worth taking 14, I've got a gap there. And we know too, like, what we can get yeah. away with and what we can't, like, in Aye. the script. And I mean, if we're, doing a, if we're doing a no budget feature, there's things you can do and there's things you can't do. Yeah. And I think, like, uh, Limitation, can I just make you more creative? And, it does, yeah. you know. When I went and did a wee thing called, uh, I mean, the things the things that I'm doing, I know that they're no festival worthy because it's the qualities they don't even need to put on a big fucking screen. So I know that. I'm doing it actually for my spirit to keep me fucking alive half the no, time. No, definitely, that's, fine, that's what it is. That's my, like I've always said, I've no you know, plan B, like I'll always be um, making stuff. And even if I did manage to make features, like I'll still be the guy that makes no budget short films on you the know, side, you know what I mean? Aye, that's important. Just, just for my mean? own sanity. Aye, aye that's it's like, like me and Stevie went to Aaron, done the, the film about two hitmen, got to Aaron and got to find a guy in three days. Yeah, that's, actually, on, that's on Amazon as well. That's on Amazon. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's actually doing well. And we we done that just to actually play around about with fucking drones. That's amazing, that's cool. That's but definitely. then to yeah, get yeah. some... Just because Crime Lord was so much us talking dialogue, let's see, he was a, a, a yeah. talking dialogue over tables. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I'm sick of us talking over tables. Yeah. Let's just go make some more visual. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we can get the shots and the boat gone to Aaron and there and no, definitely it's more of a wee visual film. So we right. went there and booked the cottage. I actually booked everything before I actually f- finished the script. That's interesting. That. But that's the thing too, that's you a know, really important thing. That's can a Robert Rodriguez style definitely. get where you go up, you know. That's what makes a 40 hour film work so well. So like I knew, all I knew about Spider was that we had that flat. Yeah. So you can write for the flat, and it really does Aye. kind of, no, it that, does help. that helps a Aye. lot, man, definitely, if you know what you've Aye. got. I, I, I had the concept. Yeah. So I went, right, I'll book the cottage. We're going to base ourselves, the wee crew in the cottage was five years. We're going to do the scenes here. Cabin fever kicks in with the two, so we might fucking kill each other before we try and kill this guy. Okay. And so we shoot a lot in there, and then we drive around the island. We've got the visual stuff with them. So we're going from there to visuals. The um, and we'll do it in 10 days, and then we shot some stuff back in Paisley and Glasgow, yeah, you know, yeah. we... And uh, it was actually just fun to do. 100%. I Even definitely. though it was yeah. what it was. It's like, I don't, there's no, there was no expectations. We had two and a half, two grand or something filmed. Do you know what I mean? That's amazing. No, you know, definitely, so definitely, yeah. there's no expectations. We yeah. just that's what it fucking is. Um, the thing that I find out in filmmaking is like, that helps with fear. Like when I shot, I went to America. That was really just to make the horror movie was really because I was really kind of, I was in a comfort zone. I was kind of fucking dying. <laughs> How did it feel over there? Like compared to here? Like, um, when I went to America, I'd, I'd, I'd actually got money for a budget for 250000 for the horror movie. Yeah. And it was, it was the, the global financial collapse happened the next day to investors and they lost a lot of money. Yeah. So the budget for the horror movie was the last thing on the fucking list. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, so when I did a wee crowdfunding campaign, I, I connected with a filmmaker that wanted me in his film. It was a, a Crawler Die. They're just doing a sequel at the moment. Nice, yeah. He'd built a studio in his fucking backyard. So 
he says, there's drive-ins here. Yeah. So come shoot the drive-in, you can borrow my camera and yeah. just fucking shoot the movie for whatever, raise 10 grand, so we raise 10 grand. So my point what I'm trying to make is, in, in filming, I think it's important, I went there just to fucking, you yeah. have to fear, scare yourself so much. Oh, definitely. I was yeah. fucking terrified. Yeah. Yeah, I had a base to live in, but there was no actors. They just went on the internet and pulled it together and we got all the actors and we got... How was that in terms of like, know, finding people over there? Like, was that, is that... Well, in the middle of fucking like, Oklahoma, Tulsa, there's no... <laughs> Nothing, no. Very hard. Yeah, yeah. But that's the beauty of the internet. If you put yeah. the tentacles out on the internet, suddenly people start coming in. Yeah. yeah. And if you get a passion for someone, they all want to get involved. That's they were, it. They, they were great. Yeah, other other yeah. people in the States were so fucking great. And actually, a lot of them have got friendships today because of that yeah. shoot and because of Oak shoot, the two movies yeah. that were shot at the same time. But the point I'm trying to make on that day was one of my most stressful days that we shouldn't be seven in the morning to fucking two in the morning at driving at 100 and it was the hottest day in Oklahoma in 50 oh, years. Fuck off. And I'm a Scottish guy running yeah, the boot. Yeah, no chance on yeah. But yeah. I started to feel confidence when a lot of the locals were collapsing with the heat and I'm still gone. Well, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was scared that someone would fucking die, you know. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, that day, and the day that I did Mission X, I shot a gun battle up at Merchant City with uh, AK-47s, and I swear to God, the whole of fucking Glasgow heard them. I mean, nice. they blasted the fuck out of the place. Well, he's using real blanks? Oh, but it was, li- aye, real blanks. That's it was amazing. as loud as fuck. Yeah, fucking hell. But I went around the local residence and I says, but they were like, listen, I shoot what you want. But the next right. day, what the fuck's <laughs> going on here? It's a wreck. <laughs> That's a word, yeah. But I was shit myself that morning, right? And then there's another few times that I just shot things for the sake of it that I was crap. Myself. My point I'm trying to make is that when I come back to some today, when I'm going to do something that's scary, right. I think of those times I go, I it's Dustin Hoffman and Waggy Dog. This is nothing. This is nothing. At the time I was yeah, in fucking Oklahoma, yeah, yeah, the yeah. fucking residents were yeah. fucking dying with the heat. Yeah, we carried on. Yeah. That's you know true, I mean? yeah, definitely. I think you've got to scare yourself. You do, no, definitely. Aye, you that's know. 100%. Yeah. And you've got to be willing to look like an asshole. If it, if it does collapse, I don't know how many times it filmed me because uh, actors maybe left me and go, he's fucked up. That was really bad. The sound was shit. Yeah. We'll work with him again. And no care. That's oh, why I work with Stevie yeah. and I write for Stevie. Aye. Because I'd done a little film. Well, called... there's a real uh, camaraderie there with both of these. You know. These really bounce off each other, really great, man, definitely. Like, but that's why I write for like, Stevie. I'll, I'll cast up, but I'd probably. Stevie's man, great. Uh, he's probably, I'll, I'll cast I'll, both of these. I'm like, not just because he's a mate, yeah. but he's the most that's fucking true, great yeah. person to get on with oh, and, and whatever. Yeah. But the reason I cast Stevie, I wrote a little film called uh, Call Girl from, and uh, it kind of fucked up bad sound. But he was always there. He's always there. He always I believed in what I was yeah. doing. So a lot of times you go to do things that you, that might just fuck up. It's not even usable. Yeah, hundred percent. I shot Crane Mod the whole hour episode and it went in the bin. Nobody seen it. It was on oh, for a week yeah. and I just dumped it and started again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it just wasn't enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So back to what we're saying. I think yeah, it's that side as filmmakers and creatives. I think we we do. I think there's too much of the old world still there, and we're getting into yeah. this new world. I know and that's we have to it, embrace it's, it. It's kind of like the, the, you know they're slowly merging together. It's interesting. It's a real interesting thing to be like. Like we we're talking about kind of like rock star filmmakers, like who is the modern day rock star filmmakers now? There's no really. There isn't. Any, there isn't man. And, and that's what I would say. We're talking about something on IndieWire this morning. Yeah. Uh, the other day, the filmmakers have to be more like bands and go out there yeah. and do their screenings or do the you know. Well, and I shout out to him, like the I mentioned earlier, uh, Douglas King. Like he did a feature film, and basically what he did was like did exactly that. He toured it around the UK. I don't know if he went to America, he might have, but he toured it around oh. the UK. And like sold to out like yeah. places like screening it, and I think that is the model that well, we should be going with. Steve Simpson, I worked with in Scotland years ago when I first came back. Moved Steve for years ago. He done the features a way back, and he done a, a, a he's done features about the American Indian, and he took a a, a, a film about um, the American Indian Reservation, a feature film. He's took it in the world for the last five six years. I think I might have saw this uh, the um, poster this in the GFT at one point. Aye, he's, he's been uh, all over the place. Yeah, he's had about 5,000 screenings uh, over the last yeah, seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So I, I acted in one of his first films. Um, and I did a wee video about him a few months ago when he was in Edinburgh. Um, so he's he's built, and he's built an audience. Yeah, He's got a meal list that's huge. Yeah, so if he wants to... Now, for me personally, it depends what kind of filmmaker you are. I think that's amazing that like, if you want to see the world and you're yeah. into that type of thing and you want to build an audience that way. Well, yeah. So this is what I'm saying is I don't think filmmakers have to take one film in two or four years, just do that. Find other entrepreneurial ways. It's like me with this crime lord. Yeah. Go on a tour with the, the, the books that I'm going to do for it. But also it's in the film. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I ah, think there's definitely. ways to just think at the box. 100% definitely. That that I think if we just, yeah. we're just selling ourselves just as much as the film. That's exactly it. That's exactly know. it. And I think that's a yeah. problem. We're all very... 
And we were because well, you're quite introverted at times, like you're, absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, years ago I couldn't fucking, but but I think that side, if you're if you're so fucking passionate, passionate about what you're it, doing, definitely, then yeah. you're gonna go fuck it, if and your voice follow, is gonna come out. People follow passion, man. Of course they do. I mean, it's definitely, infectious. Yeah, hundred percent. That's the main thing. Yeah. And that's why, like the. Like Tarantino did Reservoir Dogs, like even Reservoir Dogs point in interviews with him, it was like, oh, this guy loves films, you know what I mean? That, that's like, when have you ever seen a filmmaker that has gone anywhere that's not got that infectious energy? I know, it's so true, definitely, that's I mean? so true. Because you need that on a set with definitely, people. Definitely, aye, that's it, mean? 100%. But I'll just go as, yeah. if you've not got that, I don't think you should do it, but I don't think you're going to get anywhere with fucking films if you've not got that anyway. No, definitely, 100%, You know yourself, yeah. it's like, yeah, aye, definitely, you know, definitely. I always used to think when I was young, why is Martin Scorsese fucking talking so fast? And, yeah. then, and then as the years, you don't try to copy people, but when you're on a set, you go, yep, yep, done, right, okay, aye, next <laughs> Get it going, let's get it going. Yeah, definitely, that's so true. That is so you know, true. So you yeah. end up fucking. But yeah. do you know what? I think the way the world was gone is like, if you had a really shit script, right? But you've got a fucking audience that you built for years. There's more chance of that shit script getting made than the great script with the audience. No, it's true. No, it's so true. You no, it's so it's true. Like yeah, fucking definitely. YouTubers that have, you know, um, I'm not down in YouTubers. I admire them the way they build something. But you see some people who go. Really? Fucking four million people for know, it, fucking yeah. reviewing chocolate bars. Making a fortune, I know, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> eating chocolate bars on camera, Did you see the video yeah. I done with the guy with the chocolate bars? No, no. Oh, I God. posted a video, I was like, um, is this guy, and he just goes, he didn't even put any titles on it, nothing, he just stops, right folks, right, I got this from Greg's. It's a fucking sausage. Right, folks. Uh, rustlers, they do put the picture of some kind of lettuce there. Um, I found this, folks. It's a uh, Cadbury white, uh, creamy white chocolate. Got fucking 150,000 subscribers. Now you sell t-shirts. Yeah, and people, definitely. I know. Where are we going round? I know that's it. Because we're not putting ourselves out there. Yeah, doesn't they give a fuck? No, definitely. That is a big part. It's so true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's so true. And I think that's. That's that's gonna happen. The internet's quite new. Yeah. That's gonna happen as the years go on. Right, definitely, you know? definitely. Um, that's what I'm gonna try and do. But I may be fucking dead by then. You know? <laughs> no, not at all, um, man. But I know what you mean. That's it's, it's exactly that. It's um, it's using social media and everything. To but you, you use social media, don't you? I mean, you're a little bit. I do definitely. I definitely, man. I'm at pricey films. You can find me on there. I try. You know what I mean. But it is just. I even just know. try and make people laugh. That's the main thing. But you it's know. just it's. Uh, where do you think, the, I mean, we really talked about this, where yeah. do you think, in terms of seeing the industry, do you think a, where you would like a bit of both to doing your own stuff and getting out there with the internet and using, is that the way you see it going? I think it could be, man, definitely. Like, um, <clears> I do, like, I do, I, I saw Netflix just uh, invested in a thing, I think, where it's all portrait mode content. Yeah, yeah. Essentially just made for phones, like. Yeah. I think that could be the way we're going, and I think there is ways to do that and make really interesting, different stuff, and kind of like and still, and not be not feel like you're, you know, you're doing it just for the sake. Of it. I think there's a way to kind of do. Be creative with yeah, it. Yeah, be creative, do really artistic, Usually. interesting Aye. stuff. I really do, man. Aye. I think, Aye. and uh, I, yeah, I do, man. I think, I think, just the more this whole streaming thing goes in terms of. I mean, who knows what's coming around the corner? I mean, it could, it could be something that just replaces Netflix or becomes like, I mean, just as big. I think, these, I think these are pretty much dominant. You know, what, Amazon Prime is not going to really collapse, I don't think, because that is built with foundations of selling products. 100%, people. I definitely. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Netflix yeah, I mean, is bigger, but actually, it doesn't have any I platform. Actually, I have an argument that you know, Amazon has much more interest in films than it in terms of. Um, Amazon, actually, it does. It has you look back in the 80s films yeah, and stuff man, like that. It has the films I grew up with in the video shop, but it has had. I look there as They're on there, man. Oh, yeah, I mean, the, right. like those, you know. those films you and never get. And some of them are on Prime, some yeah. are not, and some and you, are. But you'll never get them on Netflix, man. No, no, no you'll not. No. It's got a bigger yeah. library. Um, and it's got more chance of just no collapsing because it's built this foundation of selling goods and products. Definitely, every day. 100%. So it's got that. Didn't rely on the film. No, it doesn't rely on anything. No, definitely. It's so yeah. fucking huge. So okay, so um, I think we've talked about quite a bit. Have we did all right? Yeah. Aye, aye, I'm aye, worried I've just rabbled on and aye. not made any sense. There's no fucking subtitles going on this. No, so not right? at all, not at all. Yeah, that's it. You have to deal with it, guys. Right. <laughs> it take me two days to put the subtitles. Believe it or not, man. Like I've realised in the past, like few minutes, this is kind of. I think this is my posh voice. I'm using right now. <laughs> this is as posh as it gets. Aye, that's it. This is posh as I get. Um, all right, so we'll wrap this up. So, yeah. great chat with James. Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks for so anybody much, that's man, watching. Yeah. Look out for, for David and more of my films in the future as well, man, definitely. And, uh, yeah, man. I can't wait. So no. And, uh, and J James, I'll put all the links on James's uh, uh, accounts here. So, thanks for everybody that's watching. If you don't know what the fuck we said... That's um, your problem. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs>